So let's go over um, Nicophora number one um, about bacteria growing. It's very similar to Pizzoli number one, um, just about populations growing. There's a couple of ways to do these which can get confusing. You know, which formula do you use? So hopefully I can explain how that works so it's not so confusing. Also, they don't show their work very well. Um, so I'll hopefully try to do it a little bit more clearly. Um, okay, whenever you have exponential growth, you basically have three formulas you can use. You can use the A0, some base to the T, and exponential means that the, the time or the X, whatever, is in the exponent, right? Or you can use A0E to the RT, or you can use A0 times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times it's compounded in the time period to the NT. This one's typically with interest rates for banks. If it's compounded quarterly, N is 4. If it's compounded every day, N is um, 365. The number of times per year it's compounded. So the question is, which one of these do you use? Um, and sometimes one or the other is easiest. If, you, if it's an interest rate thing, it's compounded quarterly or something, you have to use this one. Um, if it's th this one you use if you know the continuous interest rate. Here R is the continuous for continuous growth, continuous interest rate, um, the continuous rate. But many times you don't know that. Um, if they say you're gaining 9% interest compounded every second or something, sure, then you know that R is 0 0.09. Um, the rate of growth of rabbits is 9%, then maybe you know R is is 0 0.09 or something. But many times you don't know that. Many times what you know is at the end of the time period, at the end of the year, then you have 10% um, more. So like they say here, at the end of the time period, at the end of one hour, you have 10% more bacteria. That's not the continuous growth rate. If the growth rate was continuously 10% at the end of a year or an hour or something, you'd have more than 10% because you're getting interest on the interest. So if you have a certain percent at the end of the time period, you don't use this one. R is not 10%. R would be a little bit less than that. If you have 10% more at the end of a year in your bank account, probably your interest rate was like 9.5% or something, and you're getting interest in the interest. So instead, you, use, you actually use this one where you compound once. So if N equals 1, so basically at the end of the year, how much do you have? Then if N equals 1 in this formula, this is just... A0, 1 plus the rate, because n is 1, to the time, because n is 1, um, which is basically like A0, B to the T, where B is 1 plus the rate, where here R is how much you have at the end of the year. So in problem number one, they say that at, you start off, and for bacteria A, for bacteria A, at time equals 0, which we'll say is midnight, um, you have 5,000, okay, so A0 is 5,000, and at the end of one hour, you have 10% um, you have <clears throat> more. So 5,000, so that would mean that the rate here, B, would be 1 plus 0.1, which of course is 1.1. So the bacteria A then is 1.1 to the T. So again, if you know how much you have at the end of the year, um, you have 10% more at the end of an hour in this case, 10% more, then the B to the T formula is easier to use because the base is just one plus how much more you have at the end. Okay, so right away now we know bacteria A. It's 5,000 times 1.1. This is A0 times zero is 5,000. Every hour we have point, um, one more or 10% more so the base is 1 plus rate, 1.1 1 .1 to the T. Okay, that's how they can write that down so fast. So in this case, it's easier to use the A0, B to the T formula than this one because, again, we don't know the continuous growth rate. We just know what it is at the end of a year. The continuous growth rate would be about, again, like 9% or something. All right, now how about bacteria B? Um, bacteria B we'll write as B0, um, B to the T. Might as well use the same formula. We could use E to the RT again. Oh, and they're related, right? If we want to figure the what R is, if we know B, we can say, okay, well, they're the same thing. A0, B to the T is equal to A0, E to the RT. Still exponential growth. A0s cancel. Um, B to the T, then, is equal to E to the R to the T, 
because the exponents, exponent and exponent, you multiply them, right? So that's just RT. Well, then B must be E to the R. They're both raised to the T power. So therefore, the base is E to the R. Take the ln of both sides, ln of E to the R, ln and E cancel. So take the ln of E to the R, the ln and E cancel. That's why you do this. So we have then that ln of B is equal to R. So if you ever know what the base is and you want to go to the E formula, you just take the natural log of the base and that's the actual interest rate. That's actually how much it grows. So for instance, in this case, we're saying B is 1.1. If we want to know, well, what's the continuous growth rate? How fast is this thing growing? It's going to be a little bit less than 10%. We know that. So we just can go LN of 1.1. So 1.1 LN. Um, and it's about 9 point, wow, I was guessing right, about 9.53%. So the LN of B, which is 1.1, is about um, 0 0.0953 which to us about 9.53%. So if you have 10% more money at the end of the year, your growth rate, your interest rate was 9.53%, the LN of the base, one plus that. Okay, you don't need to know that for this problem, but it's just good to keep in mind. Okay, so now we want to figure out bacteria B. We use this formula. What we do know is that at T equals one, so they don't give us what it is at T equals zero. They're gonna make fly part in us, but at 1 a.m., um, there are 1,000, okay, so that's one thing we know, and we know that hey, their population triples every five hours, okay, so that's the other thing that they're going to tell us, and so then we're using those information, we got to figure out what B0 is and what B is, they give us two things, so which is what we need to figure out two things, we need to know B0 and the base, okay, so let's plug this in, so at T equal 1, B is 1,000, so we have 1,000, B is 1,000, T equal 1, so B0, B to the 1, that's one thing we know. And then, the other thing we know that the population triples every 5 hours. So, at B equals 6, B equals at times 6, we have 3 times that. So we have 3,000 at times 6. So in other words, when T equals 6, B is 3,000. 5 hours later, after T equals 1, Five hours later, which is T equals six, we have three times as many, 3,000. So five hours later, we have 3,000. So that's B0, B to the sixth. Time equals six. Those are our two equations, and we have two unknowns. The easiest way to solve these is to just divide them. That way we get rid of the B0 right off the bat. I'm going to put this one, the bottom one, on top of that one, because I like to go, I don't like fractions, right? Big numbers on top of the small numbers is kind of nice. So let's do that. Um, we can put, so I'll just divide that here, right? Divide this equation by that equation. So the 3,000 divided by 1,000, and this one divided by B0, B to the 1, which is just B0 to the B. Let's see, that's 3. I can do that in my head. B0 is cancel. B to the 6 divided by B is B to the 5th. Well, we want B, so we've got to take the 1 5th of both sides. All right, so raise it to the one-fifth power, raise it to the one-fifth power. So that gets rid of one-fifth times five is one, so that's just B. So B is equal to three to the one-fifth power, which is, writing it this way, is the fifth root of three, and that's the way that they write it. So I'll just, if you looked at their answer key, that's what they do. Okay, now we know what B is. So now we can figure out what B zero is. We can use either one of our equations. Let's use our first one here. So we have 1,000 is equal to B0B, which is just fifth root of 3 to the 1, right, using this equation here. Um, we don't need to write the 1, but what the heck, I did that anyway. Um, so we want B0. So B0 is equal to, divide both sides by that, 1,000 divided by three to the fifth there. So that's what B zero is. So finally now we know what B looks like. B is 1,000 divided by the fifth root of three, which is just a crazy number. We could get a decimal right now, but they made it, kept it perfect for a while. So let's keep it perfect. Um, times B zero to the T, uh, little b to the T, what our little b was this. So that same crazy thing, 
fifth root of 3 to the t. Okay, so we know that what b is at any time we want, how many population b bacteria, and a was easy because they told us what it was at t0 and they told us the growth rates, so we could do that. All right, now the second part of the problem is they want to know if when will b when will there be twice as many bacteria B as bacteria A? Which means that B must be growing faster. Since this grows at 1.1 to the T, that base, this space must be bigger. So let's figure out what this fifth root of 3 is. Because we can get rid of that now. So if that means I go 3, 3 hat to the 1 fifth. 1 fifth is 0.2. So if you do that in your calculator, the fifth root of 3, you get... 1.24573, and keep lots of decimal places, 573. Um, after that, it's a zero, so I can stop there pretty safely. 73. Okay, that's the fifth root of three. That's bigger than 1.1. So definitely bacteria B grows faster because their base is a bigger base to a power T, which grows faster. They start off with fewer. This is a smaller number, right? These start off with 5,000. A starts off with 5,000, B starts off with 1,000 divided by this number, maybe 800 or something, um, but they grow faster because the base is bigger. Okay, so we want to know when there are twice as many Bs, so it's going to take a little while. So we want to know when the bacteria B is equal to 2 times the bacteria A. Well, bacteria B is this crazy thing, 1,000 divided by 3, fifth root of 3 times fifth root of 3 to the t, we want that to be 2 times the number of a, which is 5,000, 1.1 to the t. Okay, and we know that, and my voice, uh, what's going on with that? Excuse my voice. We know that this fifth root of t is 1.24573. Not sure what's easier to write. Um, that's the fifth root of 3 is equal to that. Okay, let's put the t's over here and those things over there. Um, so on this side we have, okay, I'm going to start writing this now. We have 1.24573 to the t divided by, I'm going to put the 1.1 divided by 1.1 to the t. <clears throat> and on the other side we have 2 times 5,000 on the top, so that's 10,000. I can do that in my head divided by 1,000, divided by, that's this, divided by 1.24573. Um, since these are both to the t power, that's the same thing as 1.24573 1 divided by 1.1 to the t. And that's equal to 10,000 divided by 1,000 is 10. 10 and this is on the bottom of the bottom, which is on the top. So that's like 10 times this. Yeah, 10,000, 1,000, 10, 10. Well, I can do that in my head. That's just move the decimal place one. So that's 12.4573. Okay. Now we can take the ln of both sides. ln of both sides. ln of all this stuff. What that does for us is it brings down the t because... The ln of some number to a power is the same as t times the ln of that base. So our base is this. So if we take the on both sides, put the t in front. So we have, <clears throat> come on voice. So we have t ln of all this stuff here um, of 1.24573 divided by 1.1 is equal to ln of that. I'm going to do that in my calculator now. Um, so ln, I get 2.5223, 2.5223, then it's a zero, so that's good enough. Or finally, t is equal to 2.5223 divided by the ln of this thing. So I'm going to do that in my calculator right now. So 1.24 I get that this ln of all that is 0 0.124411, that's good enough. So divide those two things and we get um, 223, 
I get 20.27, close enough, 20.274, let's say, 20.274 hours. Right. And again, check and make sure you can do this on your own, you know, with the LNs and make sure it can work. And you don't even have to use LN, you could use log base 10 as long as you use it everywhere. It's the same rules. This also works for any log base. Put the T in front. That's why we do this. Okay, so 20.274 hours later, they want us to know. Now we just do a unit thing. How many minutes is that? So 0.274 hours is 20 hours and 0.274 of an hour. So 0.274 times 60 times 60 minutes, which is one hour. So what's that? So um, 0.274 times 60, 16.44. They want rounded off. So that's about 16 minutes. So 20 hours, <clears throat> 16 minutes past midnight. Let's see, that would be 8. Yeah, 8, 16. So the time would be about 8, 16 p.m. That's when there would be twice as many. Okay, um, the, the other one, Pizzoli number one, is very similar. Um, if they wanted, when are you going to have three times more, right? You just put a three here and you multiply three. Um, if they wanted, if they had said other things like, you know, you triple the population or whatever, double the population, you just put a 2,000 here. There's various ways to twist this around. Um, but as long as you're really careful and think about it well, and um, you have to be really careful, make sure you don't make mistakes, you should get an answer, you know, that kind of makes sense. Though it's hard to really tell, it doesn't make sense. But okay, hope that helps.